Hey there, Westerosi, and welcome back to Mike Meeple's Painting Poorly Miniature Painting Tutorials for A Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures Game by Come On Games. Today we've got a Mike Meeple mega tutorial for you, and we're taking a look at how to paint not one, not two, but three different Greyjoy units. The Ironborn Reavers, Trappers, and the House Harlaw Reapers. All three of the units have the same basic color scheme, with some small variations here and there. I'll be starting off by priming the models black, before adding a quickie version of Xenothal highlighting by hitting them with a quick blast of white from above. If you'd like to see more specifics on this technique, make sure you check out my how-to video. Once that's dry, it's time to start base coats. I'm going to start off with some dark Prussian blue by Vallejo and paint the tunics and cloaks of each model. I applied multiple coats to get a proper dark blue. Just make sure that your last coat is completely dry before adding another. Next, we'll take some chocolate brown by Vallejo and apply it to the kilt-looking portions of each model, along with all the belts, straps, and pouches. Again, don't be afraid to apply multiple coats. After that, take some neutral gray by Vallejo and paint the pants and sleeves that stick out from under the tabard, along with the shirts on the trappers. For the boots and gloves, I used two colors. Half of the models I used Hull Red by Vallejo, and the other half I used German Grey by Vallejo. Using one color on some and another color on the others helps add some variety to your army, though you can absolutely use only one color if you want to keep them uniform. Next, I'll use some basic skin tone by Vallejo and paint the faces, and the arms of the Reapers. After that, take your orange-brown by Vallejo and paint all the weapon handles. This includes all the flagpoles for the standard bearers. For the next part, we'll be taking some bronze by Vallejo and mixing it with equal parts Lamia medium by Citadel instead of water, and using that to paint the scale mail armor on each of the models. For metallic paints, I like to use Lamian Medium instead of water because it helps to thin it just a little bit better. Then take your plate mail metal by the Army Painter and paint the helmets, chain mail, and any other extraneous armor, along with the blades of all the weapons, and any buckles or studs in the belt.
turning our attention over to the standard bearers, I'm using German Grey to paint the black field on each of the flags. Once that's dry, I'll use Retributor Armor by Citadel to paint the squids. And for House Harla, I'll be using plate mail metal to paint the scythe on their flag, along with the metal details at the top. Next, I'll use some Apothecary White by Citadel from their Contrast Colors line, and paint the trapper's nets. The Zenithal highlight and the contrast paint will give us just about all the highlights and shade we'll need for these very detailed portions of each model. Finish up the nets by painting the little weights at the bottom of each with plate mail metal. Before taking some dark sand by Vallejo and painting the wraps on the trapper's harpoons, the cuffs on some of the sleeves, and any little bits of stitching that appear on any of the models. Now we're just going to paint the hair and beards, whatever color you like. And once that's all dry, it's time for shades. I'm starting off with Light Tone by the Army Painter and applying a thin layer to the giant squid on the Reaver Standard Bearer. After that, I'll be applying some flesh wash by the Army Painter to all of the faces and skin. We'll finish off the shades by using some Nuln Oil by Citadel on everything else. When that's dry, it's time for highlights and finishing touches. I'll be starting off by highlighting the cloaks with Prussian Blue by Vallejo. You'll be adding this highlight to all the areas where the fabric folds or billows outward. To add additional highlights, add in equal parts of Emerald by Vallejo, and paint a smaller portion of the highlights you just applied.
and you can add another drop of emerald to your mix to apply your smallest third highlight. Next, we'll take our basic skin tone and highlight the faces by painting the noses, cheekbones, and foreheads, along with the arms of the Reapers. Then take your neutral gray and highlight the sleeves and pants of the models. To add an additional highlight, mix together equal parts Neutral Gray and Green Sky by Vallejo. Add in another drop of green sky for the final highlight. After that, take some Flat Earth by Vallejo and highlight the kilts and belts. For the next level of highlight, use some Cork Brown by Vallejo. Next, grab your orange-brown and apply a highlight to the handles of the weapons in the flagpole. Mix together equal parts orange-brown and dark sand to add a second level of highlights to the weapons. When that's done, use Sky Gray by Vallejo to highlight the large seams on the nets of the trappers.
And when that's dry, use some white to apply another highlight, but only to the portions that are receiving the most light. After that, take some dark sand and highlight the wrap around the harpoons and the trim of the sleeves. Then grab some ivory by Vallejo to add a second highlight. Moving on to the boots and gloves. So for the models you used hull red for, mix together equal parts hull red and orange brown. Before using pure orange brown for the second highlight. For the German Grey models, mix together equal parts German Grey and Neutral Grey for the first highlight. And then add a drop of Sky Grey to the mix for a second highlight. These are also the same colors you'll use to highlight the flags. Once that's done, we can highlight the hair. and start working on our basing the same way we did Victarion. Paint the front half of the model's base with flat earth before you paint the rim of the base. And then apply some Vallejo dark earth paste to the back half. When that's fully cured, you can dry brush some flat earth. And then some dark sand. And then spray it with your matte spray and glue on whatever rocks or bushes you like. Now for the water effects, we're going to use some Atlantic Blue Water Texture by Vallejo, and we're simply dabbing that over the area you painted with Flat Earth earlier. When that's fully dry, finish it off by dry brushing some white over the areas where the water meets the land or the model's feet. And that's it! I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons whose generous support helped me make quality content like this. And if you're interested in becoming a patron yourself, information on how to do so can be found in the description for this video, along with links to all the supplies I use today and a link to my blog, where you'll find more tutorials for games like A Song of Ice and Fire the Miniatures Game. And if you like this video and would like to see more, remember to like, comment, and subscribe.
Until next time, Westerosi.